let's just write down some algebraic equations involving logs, let's solve them. So these, this is still yesterday's notebook. Um, let's start with this. Let's solve an equation of the form 7 <laughs> times 2 to the x is equal to pi times 3 raised to the power of x plus 1. Right, so I suggest here a strategy. Um, so it's annoying that the variables are all in the exponents, right? And there's one operation that I know that takes things out of exponents and turns them into multiplication, and that's logarithms. So let's apply some log to both sides. Uh, I claim that it doesn't matter which log we use. We'll get a strategy to get a solution either way. Um, what, what base would you guys like to use? That seems like a reasonable base to use for this problem. 10 could do. Um, 10 will work as well as anything else. Maybe I'll suggest that since there's a 2 and a 3 in the base of the exponents, log base 2 or log base 3 will result in simple old looking answers. Um, maybe we'll even <coughs> do it twice. We'll have different looking answers, but we can check them. So let's apply log base 10 to both sides. So applying log base 10, we see that we get the log base 10 of 7 times 2 to the x is equal to the log base 10 of pi times 3 raised to the power x plus 1. Fair enough. If you want to use some other base, use some other base. So I see inside of those parentheses there's, ex there, there's multiplication. Uh, what does log turn multiplication into? Addition. Addition. Good. So this will become the log base 10 of 7 plus the log base 10 of 2 to the x is equal to the log base 10 of pi plus the log base 10 of 3 raised to the power x plus 1. Fair enough? So let's just take a look at some of the terms uh, to see if things simplify and to see if things are reasonably OK. Um, but is log base 10 of 7 simplify at all? Is 7 a power of 10? <coughs> no, so we can't simplify it. But there's one upshot. It, there are no x's in that term. It's a constant. This is just a number. And so is that log base 10 of pi? It's some constant. I guess it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Uh, what does the log base 10 of 2 simplify to? What do logs turn exponentials into? So we can pull that x out of the exponent and just put it in front of the log as a multiplication. So what will we get? We'll get <coughs> log base 10 of 7 plus x times the log base 10 of 2 is equal to the log base 10 of pi. What does the log base 10 of 3 raised to the power of x plus 1 become? And I'm going to make a mistake in what I write down, and you will tell me what mistake I made. x plus 1 times the log base 10 of 3. What mistake did I make? Those parentheses are important, right? All of the x plus 1 needs to be multiplied by this thing, not just the 1. Cool. So let's take a look at what we see here. Um, Log base 10 of 7 is complicated looking, but it's a constant. Log base 10 of pi, complicated looking, but it's a constant. Uh, log base 10 of 2, does that simplify? Mm -hmm. Well, 2 is not a power of 10, but it is a constant, right? So there's no big deal. Uh, it's a complicated looking constant, but it's a constant. Uh, <coughs> log base 10 of 3, but that has no x's too. All of those things are constants. So the most complicated thing I see here is x to the power of 1. This is a linear equation. Those are easy to solve, right? We have complicated looking symbols, but we'll just treat them like the numbers they are, and we'll be fine. So um, how do you solve a linear equation? What is it that you need to do? 
get x to one side, and then like, divide by whatever's next to the x, and then you're done. So let's do that. So I guess I'll try to move, I don't know, all the x's to this side. Uh, maybe I should also expand that piece out. So I'll move that over to the other side at least. x times log base 10 of 2 is equal to, so I'll subtract the log base 10 of 7 to the other side, is equal to the log base 10 of pi minus the log base 10 of 7. I'll distribute this out plus log base 10 of 3 plus x times log. Oh, didn't give myself quite enough space. Base 10 of 3. Cool. Did I do anything? Does anything look suspicious? Yeah. Why is there two log base 10 of 3s? Yeah, so you, if you want to expand this, you have to distribute, right? Okay. So there should be a log base 10 of x, log base 10 of 3 times x, and a log base 10 of 3 times 1. Cool. Um, and now you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract the thing with the x to the other side. Maybe I'll even factor out the x in this a single step. And then I'll do some, do some division. So I'll get x times log base 10 of 2. I'm going to subtract the x times log base 10 of 3 to the other side, and I'll factor out the x in one step. Minus log base 10 of 3. And all right, these parentheses mean that this x is multiplied by the log base 10 of 3, which it should be, is equal to log 10 of of pi minus log base 10 of 7 plus the log base 10 of 3. Do you want exact or decimal answers? Uh, well, I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to get down to an exact decimal. Uh, I am going to want to start up the computer at some point because I want to do some numerical stuff later on today. Uh, so what do you need to do if you want to solve this for x? Divide by whatever's next to the x. So you end up with x equal to, and maybe I'll do one simplification too. Um, if I see a bunch of logs subtracted from each other, added and subtracted from each other, the subtractions will become divisions. The additions will become multiplications. So what do I really see on this left hand, si the right hand side? I see the log base 10 of pi over 7 times 3. And then I need to divide by the thing that's next to the x. Well, that's the log base 10 of 2 over 3. How do people feel like that? That's the, that step, was that step too much? People follow that last step? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you couldn't follow it, you couldn't see it. <coughs> so what happened in that step? Well, a few things. Log base 10 of 2 minus log base 10 of 3, that's the same as the log base 10 of 2 over 3. So that number right there is the same as that number. But it was multiplied by the x, so I needed to divide it over. So that's why it's in the denominator. And this quantity, well, log base 10 of pi plus log base 10 of 3, that's log base 10 of pi times 3. Addition becomes multiplication inside of the parentheses. Subtraction becomes division. How do people feel about that? Anyone do the same problem but using a different base while I did this? Uh, well, I guess here's a question. Was there anything special about base 10 that made this particularly doable? In fact, I guess you could look at this. This is like a change of basis formula thing. Right? I see a fraction of two logs. The change of basis formula says that this should be the same thing as the log base 2 thirds of pi times 3 over 7. There's another way of writing the same answer. How do people feel about that? That seem OK? 
So if you see an exponential equation, take advantage of the fact that logs behave well under multiplication, and they behave well under exponentiation. Apply a log to both sides, and it'll all simplify down to a linear equation. Um, yeah. So when you mentioned, <coughs> excuse me. So when you mentioned the change of basis formula. Yeah. So you're saying basically, if you take the denominator, so what's being all that is being divided by, and you just change the base with what the logs were. It's so like on the left side, was the two and three anywhere. When it's um subtraction of terms division, <coughs> and then you just change the base to that. Yeah. So the the change of base formula it says. And we have exactly that situation up there. We have log base 10. It doesn't matter what this base is. This base can be anything you want. Uh, of x log base 10 of a. That'll become log base, the thing in the parentheses in the denominator of x. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. So let's do one last one. Uh, let's do one of the remaining two. Let us solve either an equation of the form four to the x plus two to the x minus one is equal to zero, or nine to the x plus two times three to the x minus four, four is equal to zero. And I think I'll do the last one, just it will result in a less crowded document for me. So let's solve the last one. And here's the trick. Um, so it looks like a complicated equation. And there's subtraction going on all over the place on the left-hand side. So you can't apply a log to both sides and hope that it becomes nice on because seeing addition or subtraction inside of the parentheses of a logarithm isn't helpful. Log of a subtraction doesn't become anything nice. The difference between two logs becomes division, which is sometimes useful, but there's no such trick here. Um, <coughs> but here's the thing to notice. Uh, 30 to the x and 9 to the x, those are like related a little bit, right? Those have a common base that we could think about. What's a common base between 30 and 9? 9 is a power of 30. So let's take advantage of that. So let's use this. So 9 is equal to 3 squared. So what can you tell me about 9 to the x in terms of 3 to the x? Uh, Say it louder. Is it half? Uh, not half. Well, it's 3 to like the 2x, right? But we can rewrite that in a different way. That's the same thing as 3 to the x squared. So I'm going to perform what's just called a change of variables. Instead of trying to solve for x directly, I'm going to forget that there's a 3 to the x at all in this. I will do this. I will say, well, let's, for now, set y equal to 3 to the x. I'm going to change variables and see what the equation becomes. So every 3 to the x in the equation are replaced with a y. So what will this become? Well, it'll become 9 to the x. That's the same thing as 3 to the x squared. That's y squared. So the equation will become y squared plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. <coughs> Oh, hey, does that look like an easier equation to solve? <coughs> yeah, I guess that's just, it's a quadratic equation. Maybe one thing you could do is you could say, well, let's see if it factors nicely. I don't think it does. Uh, so you resort to just the quadratic formula. And you say, well, what's the solution to this? It'll be y equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Oh, b squared is 4. All over 2a. So I see negative 2 plus or minus 4 plus 16 is 20. Gazoom tight. And let's keep on simplifying before we, we move on to the next step. Um, does 20 have any perfect square factors? What perfect square factor does it have? 4. 20 is 5 times 4. 4 is 2 squared, so I can call it 2 out of the square root. So that'll be negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root 5 all over 2. 
Does anything cancel on that? The twos, right? Everything in the numerator has a two next to it. Everything does. And the denominator is two. So that's the same thing as negative one plus or minus root five. So that tells me what y is equal to. So am I done? Have I succeeded in solving for x? No, I've only solved for y. But what is y? 3 to the power of x. So now I have two different equations to solve. I have to solve 3 to the x is equal to <laughs> negative 1 plus root 5. And I need to solve 3 to the x is equal to negative 1 minus root 5. Does one of those equations look suspicious? Like it doesn't have a solution? Which one? The second one. Uh, is 3 to the x ever negative? Nah. Is negative 1 minus root 5 negative? It is. So it doesn't have a solution. So this is negative. So this equation has no solutions. Uh, what about negative 1 plus root 5? Is that positive? So that definitely has a solution. In fact, what is the solution to that equation? Solve for x. Yeah, so there's the solution to this equation. People feel pretty good okay about that example? So if you see like a sum of a bunch of exponentials, it looks like they all have similar looking bases. Maybe you can take advantage of that to say, well, screw it. I'm not going to bother solving for this thing with the exponentials. I'm going to make a change of basis. That will transform the exponential equation into a polynomial equation, I hope. And then solve that polynomial equation. Yeah? So like, um, when we were defining <coughs> the at the very beginning, with our 3x, or 3 to the x squared, you wouldn't distribute that to the x, but just to the 3, correct? Or yeah. For reason. Yeah, so the, it's, the reason is exponential loss. So 3 to the x squared, all right, that's 3 to the x times 3 to the x. So if you expanded that out, that would be x threes in a row, another x threes in a row, that's 2x threes in a row. So that's just exponential loss. And that's the same thing, right, as right, you could pair these up so it's two threes at a time. So all of those things are true. You just have to pick the form that seems most useful. Yep. All of these are the same, but there's the one that expresses it in terms of 3 to the x. Um, and I think I won't do this uh, item 8, but instead, uh, let's just make the substitution. So what seems like a good substitution to make in that problem? 2 to the x. Let's give that a new name. I guess here I say to call it y, so I'll call it y. So if y is 2 to the x, well then that 2 to the x is just going to become a y. So if y is 2 to the x, then how can you express 4 to the x in terms of 2 to the x? It's y squared. Because 4 to the x will be, I mean, you've already got this. That's 2 squared to the x is the same thing as 2 to the 2x is the same thing as 2 to the x squared, y squared. So you can rewrite this as y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. And is that suddenly an easier equation to solve? You'll get presumably two solutions. Maybe you'll get none, in which case your life will be really easy. And then you'll just have to look at those two solutions and say, does 2 to the x equal to each of those numbers have a solution? Nice. 
Uh, any questions about this before I move on to what was supposed to be today's note packet? Right. So, let's do some applications. And there are two types of applications that I want to think about. Population growth, which uh, is coming fast in this note packet because it's also the one that I care about more. Yes, how many people don't have uh, notes right now? Just you? All right. Uh, population growth, which will be the one that I'll find the most compelling. Um, and then also computation of the result of compound interest, which, while important to understand, all regard is less important than population growth to me. Uh, how many people here are pursuing like a biology or life sciences related field? OK, yeah, so that matters to you. Um, how many people are pursuing financial or uh, accounting type pursuits. Okay, so computation of compound interest would matter more to you. So let's, let's think about population growth. So if I have a population of, say, rabbits, and there's no constraint about the environment, and the winter isn't setting in, they have all the food they could possibly eat, then the more rabbits there are now, the more rabbits will be produced by these rabbits. So the rate at which the population of rabbits grows is proportional to the number of rabbits. That's exactly what exponential functions do. So populations without any constraint are modeled by exponentials. So any population in an environment without any limiting factors is modeled by p of t equal to p0 times an exponential, e to the kt, uh, where p0 is the initial population and k is some constant. Uh, maybe I'll make a comment about units. So p0 is whatever the initial population is given in terms of. If it's like a population of bunnies, then usually you're given the number of bunnies. Uh, if it's a population of, say, a bacteria or a slime mold, they won't bother counting individual bacteria. They'll just tell you the mass of the thing. Uh, it doesn't make sense for the thing in the exponent to have a unit. And it looks like it does, right? Time is measured in hours or seconds. But that constant should just be, that, that unit should just be canceled out by the constant k. So the units on k will be something like 1 over an hour or 1 over a second. So with that out of the way, let, let's just do an example. Um, so do, 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 do. let's suppose you have a population of bacteria growing in a petri dish. The sample begins containing 0.2 milligrams of bacteria. After one hour, you have 0.3 milligrams of bacteria. Let's ask this question. How long will it be until you have one milligram of bacteria? So let's, let's try to figure this out. Um, so a lot of times when you have one of these general models and you're given some baseline information, you want to use that baseline information to figure out the constants in this model. So P0 is supposed to be the initial population. What's the initial population of bacteria? 0 0.2. 0 0.2. And maybe I'll even have the units, 0.2 grams. Um, and then after some amount of time, we're told how much there is. Uh, what's the second sample point that we've taken? After time equals how long did we look again? After one hour, you have 0.3 milligrams. Time equals? one hour, you have 0.3 milligrams. So 0.3 milligrams is the population at one hour. No, oh, milligrams, not grams. And I have a formula that I can use. This is equal to, so 0.3 milligrams is equal to 0.2 milligrams times e to the k, something I don't know, times one hour. Does that look like an equation that we can solve? There's like only one unknown, right? The k is the only unknown right now. Let's try to solve that for k. Uh, what seems like a good force to do if you want to solve that for k? Namely, if you want to solve 0.3 milligrams is equal to 0.2 milligrams 
times e to the k times 1 owl. Don't you want to get it by itself then? Yeah, so you'll want to get that k by itself. Yeah. Oh, could you just subtract all the programs on the other side? Uh, not subtract, but divide, right? Yeah. Because they're multiplied by yeah. stuff, so to want to do multiplication, you need to divide. <coughs> so dividing over to the other side, I'll see 0.3 milligrams divided by 0.2 milligrams is equal to e to the k times one hour. All right. Um, anything cancel on the left hand side? No, but you can expand it though, couldn't you? Or no? From the e k times one. Oh yeah. Well, you could. Did I say right or left? I wanted to simplify the left hand side. Okay. Right. The milligrams cancel on the left. And what's 0.3 divided by 0.2? 1.5. I guess, yeah, we can write 1.5. I was going to go for 3 halves, but decimals are OK too, I guess. Um, so let's not think about expanding this side, because what do I see now? I see a number is equal to an exponential. That's an exponential equation. Could I rewrite that in log form? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. So if you do that, you'll wind up with, so if you put it in log form, ln of 1.5 is equal to k times 1 at wall. Uh, so what do you need to do if you want to solve that for k? line the units up the way they're supposed to line up. So it must be then that ln of 1.5 times 1 over 1 hour is equal to k. How do people feel about that? That's OK? OK, so that tells us exactly what function to use to model this population. <laughs> Let's use this model to make a prediction. What is it that we were asked to predict? Yeah. Actually, a quick question going back to the last step. Mm -hmm. So when you did ln um, of 1.5 times 1 over 1 hour, mm -hmm. right? so I guess like when you're dividing over, why are you multiplying and then do it like divide by 1, one hour? So like I did, when you have the red point of 8 times 1 hour, and then you divide over the 1 hour, mm -hmm. but I guess we've seen this, we divide it. Uh, yeah. Well, those are the same, right? So I guess it's just that's how you write it down the same one. Yeah, if you write ln of 1.5 divided by 1 hour is equal to k, I'm happy with that too. Okay. Yeah, those are the same. Yeah, in the same way as you would say, like, speed is in units of distance divided by time, or you might say it's in units of distance times the reciprocal of time. So both of those are good. They're both the same. Uh, cool. So let's go back to what we actually wanted to see. What did we want to discover? What was our goal in this problem? How long does it take us to get to one milligram? How long does it take to get to one milligram? We have a formula now that models this population of bacteria. Let's figure out when that model says the result should be one milligram. So the model is do to do to do to do, do. Well, right there, right? 0.2 times e to the k, but we know what k is now, ln of 1.5 divided by hours times t. And I want to solve that for t. Does that look like an equation that's reasonable to solve for t? Um, so maybe what I'll even do is I'll say 
You guys should take a moment and solve that. I'm going to take the time that you guys take to do that and actually log into the computer so I can do, you know, computer computations. You should absolutely consult with those around you. If you say, don't even know what the first step to do is, talk with those around you. So how many people are coming down to an answer? Well, I guess how many people want another couple of minutes before? Come together. All right, let's just come together. Um, so maybe I'll jump to this. What is the solution? <coughs> cool, so natural log of? Five divided by the natural log of 1.5 yep. in hours? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I guess, right, maybe you notice that's the same thing as the log base 1.5 of 5 if you're into that sort of replacement. Maybe the other one is more natural anyway. Um, anyone get something different? Uh, and let's also get an approximate value. What, what is that approximately? Somewhere around four hours. Cool. Uh, anyone? Does anyone want that one discussed explicitly? Okay, cool. Let's do it. So, here's the equation that I want to solve. Two times some stuff <coughs> is equal to one. Point two times some stuff is equal to one. So what's if you want to solve an equation that looks like 0.2 times some stuff is equal to 1, what's a good first step? Divide by 0.2. Divide by 0.2. And here, well, everything's in milligrams, so I'm going to drop the units. So I'll see e to the natural log of 1.5 times t. I know that time is measured in hours, so I'm going to suppress those units too. Is equal. Yeah. Thank you. It is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.2. Um, and 1 divided by 0 0.2, like, that's a number that you know what that is. What is 1 divided by 0 0.2? Oh, you won't be raising your hand to answer. You're raising <laughs> your hand in the form of this is what the answer is. All right, that's 5. 
Because 2 is 1 fifth? Point 0.2 is 1 fifth? Nice. So now I have e to the ln of 1.5 times t is equal to 5. Uh, is that an equation in exponential form? Isn't it? It's uh, e to a power is equal to a number. So let's rewrite that in log form. So rewriting that in log form, I'll get log <laughs> of 1.5 times t. This isn't the only way to think about it, but it's a good way to. Is equal to the log base e of 5. And what do you get when you solve that for t? Well, how do you solve that for t is maybe the better thing. Yeah, divide by the thing that's next to the t. We'll end up with t equal to ln 5 divided by ln 1.5. Was that useful? Good. Um, and let's make one last prediction. Uh, so in four hours, <coughs> the quantity of bacteria will be up to one milligram. In order to see that things can get silly, uh, let's see how much there will be after a full day. So 24 hours? <coughs> so what do you have to do to accomplish this? <coughs> yes, you could like you wouldn't even have to reset it. If you wanted to, you could have the portion. Or you could just use your given information and just look at it too. That's what I did. Because yeah. we know that like every four hours we get one milligram. Ah, but it's not every four hours will we get one milligram. It grows exponentially fast, not linearly. You'll get a way underestimate. Yeah. Could you just plug in uh, the T? The formula where t's added. Yeah. So you'll plug in t equal to everything else is an hour, so let's translate to hours. One day is 24 hours into the original formula. So p of one hour, I'll suppress units, is initial quantity, 0.2 in milligrams, times e to the k, but we already know what k is. It's the ln of 1.5 times time, 24 hours. And that, I mean, in some sense, it is whatever it is. It's 0.2 times the exponential of <coughs> the log of 1.5 times 24. Uh, and happily, like, Wolfram Alpha has a nice property that it gives you what you typed in in pretty print. Where Wolfram Alpha, when it says log, it means log base e. So that is what I actually wanted to compute. And there is the result. It is somewhere around uh, 3,366 milligrams. So a 3 gram sample of bacteria. So it's gotten like silly, right? That answer is larger than is reasonable. Well, approximately 3,360, oh, 67 milligrams. Or 3.4 grams. So in the course of that one day, it's grown way faster than linearly. If you just said, well, it added three grams in the first, no, it added one gram in the first four hours, one milligram in the first four hours, your estimate would be like it would only add four milligrams total. It did way more than that. Exponentials grow really quickly. Um, and in fact, do you think that population of bacteria can continue growing at that rate in still fit in a petri dish? Not for long. And this is a shortcoming of uh, exponential growth as a population model. Populations without any constraints behave exponentially. So rabbits in spring and summertime, when there are no constraints on their population, tend to grow exponentially fast. But then winter happens. Cool. Everything feels pretty OK? Nice. So.
I want to think, give one last idea about how to think about population growth. So the formula on the last page is P of t is P0 times the natural exponential raised to the kt. That's the formula on the previous page. But if you unravel that a little bit, that's the same thing as P0 times e to the k raised to the t by exponential laws. Those are the same. Well, but look at this term e to the k. Does that have any t's in it? Just in e to the k? No, it's still just a constant. So instead of trying to figure out what that k is, I'll just give e to the k a name. I'll call it, I don't know, b. It doesn't matter what you call the variables. Let's call that b. And you'll get the formula that another model for population growth is p of t is equal to p0 times b to the t, where p0 is still the initial population, and b is equal to some constant. another model which I've told you is equivalent to the model we just had. Do, 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 do. That all was. Okay. Um, let's try to use this new model to answer another question. Um, so let's suppose you have some initial population of three rabbits. After four days you have eight rabbits. Let's see how many rabbits we expect to have at day 10 using this model. So let's try to do it. Um, so given this information, what is the initial population? Three. Three. And I'll suppress the units. We know that the population is measured in rabbits. So P0 is three. Um, at T0, we see that we have a population of eight. So that means that, no, we'll plug in T equals three. That eight should be P0 times b to the t. But I know what almost everything is. p0 is 3 <coughs> times b, which I don't know what it is, raised to the 3. So 8 is equal to 3 times b raised to the power 3. Does that look like I could solve that equation for b? Yeah, what would you want to do to solve that equation for b? 3y is b, or 3 times the log of x. So something you could try to rewrite it in log form. Let's see what happens if we do that. If we rewrite it in log form, well, I guess we'd have to go to 8 thoughts is equal to b to the power of 3. Now we could rewrite in log form. So I'm doing this to the side because this isn't what I actually want to do. Um, and we would get log base b of 8 over 3 is equal to 3. Does that make the equation better or worse if we want to solve for b? <coughs> I certainly haven't solved for b. Mm -hmm. And now it's kind of in a more complicated pace place. It's in the base of a log. Um, so I don't like that solution. Uh, I like this step. This step is good. So let's, let's do that step first. So 8 over 3 is equal to b cubed. What should you do to both sides if you want to figure out what b is equal to? Yeah, thought of it. You can do something simple with logarithms. So b is equal to the thought root of 8 over 3. Aha, so now I know what b is. So now I have this model on the nose. I know that p of t is the initial population 3 times the cube root of 8 over 3 raised to time.
And what is it that I actually wanted to know? We expect at day 10. So that means I guess I just need to plug in t equals 10, 10 days. So p of 10 will be thui multiplied by the cube root of 8 over thui raised to the 10th power. Um, and maybe before we even go and like get a decimal approximation for that, how, what? How would you want to simplify that? What do you get when you take a cube root and then raise to the 10th power? That's like the 10 over 30 power. So I don't know if that's necessarily better looking to you, but I think that's better looking. So that's 3 times 8 over 3 raised to the power 10 over 3. And now I guess we should get a decimal approximation for that. So let's do that. So that's 3 multiplied by 8 over 3 raised to the 10 over 3. So sure, there's a simplification. But it says here there should be like 78.9 rabbits. Um, is 78.9 a reasonable number of rabbits to have? And so that tells you there's already something iffy about using this as a model for population growth. Population growth is, by its nature, discrete and not continuous. When a new rabbit appears, it is one new rabbit. It's not a fraction of a new rabbit. Um, so the fact that you get like a non-whole number means that this, this is an approximate model. So maybe I would even predict that there should be somewhere around 79 rabbits at day. So what do we have tomorrow? We have a group quiz. So join that group quiz, I'll give you back to the comms. Yeah. Can you allow on your turn this calculators or Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So let's 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 explain that. Um so it'll be similar to the previous quiz. I like that model. It'll be a two-part quiz. Part one will be some multiple choice problems where you'll be allowed to no choose no calculator. Part two will be a single, slightly more involved problem where I'll want a decimal approximation to an answer, so I'll allow you to use a calculator. Mm -hmm. If you don't bring a calculator because no one in your group believes in calculators, I'm not going to allow cell phones or laptops. That's too much. I will allow you to come up to the front and plug a computation into not Wolf of Alpha, but the Google calculator, which I'm well aware only knows about log base 10. So if you don't have a calculator, make sure you understand the change of base volume. Okay, yeah, then I'll be there from one to two. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today's Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, one to two. Great. Okay. Just making sure. So I want to even hit something on top of it. Perfect. I will see you then. Extra comments. Thank you. Uh, Maya, did you give me a review for the window? No, I forgot. Okay. Uh, did you do one? Yeah, I did. Uh, is it just like back in your normal or something? Yeah. Can you get it to me within the next, say, two hours? Okay. Come up to my office. If I'm not there, when you try to tell them in, so it doesn't belong to me. Yeah. Yeah, no cheats are good. Yeah.